the mysterious mummy of the god Amun-Ra discovered in Egypt. A mysterious 2,700-year-old mummy was discovered in Egypt that has captivated the scientific community. It's a wooden mummy that was discovered uh, recently belonging to the Egyptian god Amun-Ra. The mummy included a ceremonial decoration as reported by the mirror with various hieroglyphic signs. The director of the Antiquities Department of Egypt characteristically stated that the sarcophagus is made of wood and covered with a layer of plaster. The tomb was discovered in 1978 and a team of archaeologists has been studying it since 2009. Various scenes inside the tomb depicted hunting, fishing and various other events. Okay, so this is supposedly the god Amun-Ra of Egypt. As we can see, he's got homo sapien characteristics, five fingers, eyes, nose, ears, and a very tailored little beard. And uh, it looks like a sarcophagus of any other mortal, but he was a god, the god Amun-Ra. He was a major ancient Egyptian deity who appeared as a member of the Hermopolitan Ogdod. Amun was attested from the Old Kingdom together with his wife Amunet and the 11th dynasty. That's 21st century BC. Amun-Ra rose to the position of patron deity of Thebes by replacing Montu. In early history, Amun are mentioned in the old Egyptian pyramid texts. The name Amun, written Imn, meant something like the hidden one or invisible, which is also attested by epithets found in the pyramid text, O you, the great god whose name is unknown. And he has a temple in Karnak, identification with Min and Ra. He was originally uh, depicted as uh, azure skin, but then uh, uh, the Egyptian god Amun, usually shown in striding man wearing a hot, tall plumed crown. Originally, Amun was depicted with red-brown skin, but after the Amana period, he was painted with blue skin, symbolizing his association with air and primeval creation. And Amun was also depicted with a wide variety of other forms, according to Wikipedia. In the Yu Kingdom, he was also known as a god again. Now, the Armana period, during the later period of Egyptian 18th dynasty, the pharaoh Akhenaten, also known as Amenhotep IV, advanced the worship of the Aten, a deity whose power was manifested in the sun disk, both literally and symbolically. He defaced the symbols of many of the old deities and based his religious practices on the deity, the Aten, he moved his capital away from Thebes, but built his abrupt change very unpopular with priests of Amun, who now found themselves without any other former power. And the religion of Egypt was inexorably tied to the leadership of the country, the pharaoh being the leader of both, and a god, of course. The pharaoh was the highest priest in the temples of the capital, and the next lower level of religious leaders were important advisors to the pharaoh, many being administrators of bureaucracy that ran the country. In ancient Egyptian theology, the god of wind, Amun, came to be identified with the solar god, Ra, and the god of fertility and creation, Min, so that Amun-Ra had the main characteristic of a solar god, creator god, and fertility god, and he also adopted the aspect of the ram from the Nubian solar god, besides numerous other titles and aspects. As Amun-Ra, he was petitioned for mercy by those who believed suffering had come about as a result of their own or others' wrongdoings. Amun-Ra, who hears the prayer, who comes to the cry of the poor and distressed, beware of him, repeat him, the son and daughter, to great and small, relate him to generations of generations who have not yet come into being, relate him to fishes in the deep, to birds in heaven, Repeat him to him who does not know him and to him who knows him, though it may be that the servant is normal in doing wrong, yet the Lord is normal in being merciful. The Lord of Thebes does not spend an entire day angry, 
As for his anger in the completion of the moment, there is no remnant, and as Ka endures, thou wilt be merciful, says the prayer. So, the Theban high priest of Amun and the decline in the 10th century BC, the overwhelming dominance of Amun over all Egypt gradually began to decline. In Thebes, however, his worship continued unabated, especially under the Nubian 25th dynasty of Egypt, as Amun was by now seen as a national god in Nubia. The temple of Amun, Jabel Barkal, founded during the New Kingdom, came to be the center of the religious ideology of the Kingdom of Kush. The victory steal the column of uh, Pille at Gebel Bardak, 8th century, 8th century BC, now distinguishes between an Amun of Napata and an Amun of Thebes, 653 BC. The last pharaoh of the Nubian dynasty still born a theophoric name referring to Amun in the Nubian form, Amani. Siwa Oasis and Libya. In Siwa Oasis, located in western Egypt, there remains the solitary oracle of Amun near the Libyan desert. The worship of Amun Ra was introduced into Greece at an early period, probably through the medium of the Greek colony in Karin, which must have formed a connection with the great oracle of Amun in the oasis soon after its establishment. Larbas, a mythological king of Libya, was also considered the son of Amun. And according to the 6th century AD author Corippus, a Libyan people known as the Laguatan carried an effigy of their god Gurzil, whom they believed to be the son of Amun, into battle against the Byzantine Empire in 540s AD. And in the Levant, Libya and Syria, uh, Lebanon and Syria, Amun is mentioned in the Hebrew Bible as Ammon of No in Jeremiah 46.25, also translated as the Horde of No and the Horde of Alexandria, and Thebes possibly is called No Ammon in Naum 3.8, these texts were presumably written in the 7th century BC. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, said, Behold, I am bringing punishment upon, upon Ammon of Thebes and Pharaoh and Egypt and her gods and her kings upon Pharaoh and those who trust in him. This is Jeremiah 46, 25. Isn't that amazing? And in Greece, Ammon, worshipped by the Greeks as Ammon or Heliopolis, meaning the city of the sun god, had a temple and a statue, and another one in Sparta, in inhabitants, as Pafsania says. At Megalopolis, the god was represented with the head of a ram, and the Greeks of Kyrenica dedicated at Delphi a chariot with the statue of Amun. When Alexander the Great occupied Egypt in late 332 BC, he was regarded as liberator, thus conquering Egypt without a fight, he was pronounced son of Amun by the oracle at Siwa. Amun was identified as a form of Zeus, and Alexander the Great often referred to Zeus Amun as his true father, and after his death, currency depicted him adorned with the horns of Amun, the ram's horns are at the side of his head, as a symbol of his divinity. The tradition of depicting Alexander the Great with the horns of Amun continued for centuries, with Alexander being referred to in the Quran as Du al-Kamayin, the two-horned one, a reference to his depiction on Middle Eastern coins and statu uh, statuary as having the horns of Amun. So this mysterious mummy of the god Amun-Ra discovered in Egypt from 2,700 years ago is obviously a human being. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.